Hey everybody, welcome back into the 24-7 Sports Studios for a continuation of our National Signing Day coverage. Grace Remington here with our Director of Recruiting, Steve Wiltfong, and we are so excited to talk to the top cornerback in the 2024 class, Ellis Robinson, who just announced his commitment. So we are going to go live to IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida, and there they are, Ellis and the Robinson family. Thank you so much for joining us. You just announced your commitment to the Georgia Bulldogs. And you guys look awesome, decked out in the black and red. Yeah, so let's start with the most obvious question here. Ellis, why are you rolling with the Bulldogs? Uh, I really say the uh, relationship that I've built with Coach Fran over the years, ever since he's been at Rutgers, you know, I feel like ever since I met him at Rutgers and he went to Georgia, the relationship just got better and everything. And like ever since I took my visit up to Georgia, I just loved it there the first day. So I just knew like, like from day one that Georgia was home for me. Ellis, you're a New Jersey native, Fran Brown, a New Jersey native from Camden there. Uh, you emerged on the scene as a freshman, as you said. I thought the obvious question was, how did you get that bulldog statue there at IMG Academy? <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, this, this was actually something that was um, given to uh, me and my wife, so I figured it'd be a nice prop to add to the uh, add to everything, add to the commitment. So, absolutely, uh, Ellis. Obviously, you're committed to the two-time national champs. You choose Georgia over Alabama, Miami, LSU, and Colorado. Why do you think Georgia is so successful? Uh, I really say Georgia's successful just by like off of like everything that they do really from like being like one like a family or like being on the field really it's like everything they do they just do it all together really and I just make it feel like Ellis you're in the class of 2024 so you had some time to make this, this decision but you decided to announce your commitment early I see your family filling out the frame in our shot here obviously they're very important to you and it's my understanding that the month of February deciding now holds some significance for you guys. So why did you choose to announce now? Uh, well, like I said, well, February 1st, you know, it's a tough month for my family and everything. You know, like my grandparents died during that uh, month and everything. So I just felt like if I commit now and everything, like I can just bring everybody up, like lift some spirits up and everything and like the family. So that's like the main reason why I committed now. When did you get the sense that you were going to be a Georgia Bulldog? Was it the Tennessee game when you were there? Was it the national title parade? Was it before all those visits? Yeah, I say it probably was like my second visit being there. I don't know. It was just, it was just something about it. It's just like just made it feel like at home and everything. Really, it's just like it just felt great just being there. You've obviously been able to spend some time with Kirby Smart and his staff. How do you think they'll be able to? prepare you for the rest of your football journey? Oh, I definitely think that they could prepare me for like my next journey, you know, cause my goal is definitely to go to NFL and I definitely think that they definitely could prepare me. They can uh, like get me to that next level, you know, with Coach Frank, Coach Smart, Coach Muschamp, I know they definitely could like develop me into being like the man and like the player that I want to be. You join a recruiting class that already includes Landon Thomas, the top tight end in the country, Peyton Woodyard and Jalen Hayward, two coveted defensive backs like yourself and linebacker Demarcus Riddick. That's five top 50 prospects right now, consensus. Uh, let's talk about the potential of your recruiting class and what you're particularly bringing to Athens. Uh, I say what I'm bringing to Athens really is like all, all around corner, a complete corner and I could do it all really from hitting the cover and really I just like could do it all. And the potential of this class that you guys are putting together, who are you working to join you? Uh, I'm definitely trying to get Dylan Rayola to come. You know, I'm, I'm trying to get a lot of guys, you know, I'm trying to get the whole 24 to come commit. <laughs> <laughs> Love to see it. Uh, before we let you go, Ellis, where can Georgia fans follow you on social media? Uh, my Instagram is Ellis underscore dot 2.0. And my Twitter, I don't need to be on it. You it's, uh, <laughs> this Twitter is er 4 uh, underscore the savior, D-A and savior. Nicole, Ellis, from a parent's perspective, what makes Georgia special? I'll let you answer that one, baby. <laughs> I mean, um, for us, it was knowing that he would be taken care of, you know, that he was comfortable, that he would get the education that he need, as well as the development that he needs as a football player. So, you know, we just felt like that was place 
that offered everything. I, I agree. I just think it just checked all the boxes from top to bottom, the relationships, the coaching. Um, I know what he wants, um, and I believe that George can get him to, you know, to what he wants. Hey, it's important that uh, mom and dad love the Athens atmosphere as well. Well, Ellis, your mother, your mother Nicole, and father Ellis, and the entire family, thank you all for spending part of your special day with us. Many congratulations to you, and we can't wait to watch you on Saturdays in Athens. Thank, thank you, very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, that was the top cornerback in the 2024 class, Ellis Robinson, the fourth, right after announcing his commitment to the Georgia Bulldogs. The Bulldogs far and away the top class in the 2024 cycle. Uh, before we get a little deeper into that class, let's just talk about Robinson and his fit for a while. His nickname is Ellis Island. I love when cornerbacks have nicknames like that, but how do you see him fitting into this dog's defense? Well, he lives up to the bill. You know, he's a six foot, 175 pound fluid corner that can run great range and a great wingspan. You know, he's a guy that, uh, uh, one of the most coveted players at the position for a reason. He's a guy that can play press. He's a guy that can play off. He's a smart physical football player that can tackle in space. And so when you're Georgia, you're at the point in the process where you're kind of selecting the guys you want. And Ellis Robinson, it was a coveted target on the board that they view as one of the best players in America. So Steve, you've projected this class to be the best of all time, at least in 24 seven sports rankings history, uh, beating A&M's historical 2022 class. So what does Georgia have to do to stay on that pace? Well, they got to keep landing guys like Ellis Robinson. I think that when you look at the prospects that Georgia's in the lead group group for early in the cycle and where they're ranked, you could see a path for them surpassing that Texas A&M class from two cycles ago. It starts with Dylan Rayola, the quarterback from Phoenix, Arizona, going to play his senior football season at Pinnacle High. I expect him to visit Georgia sometime here in the spring in Georgia was the early front runner for Dylan Rayola. Before we ranked Dylan Rayola as the number one player in the country, before we ranked him in the top 247, Grace, Georgia had offered him and already got him to campus several times. So they were extremely out in front on, on Dylan Rayola, but they're in the lead group for KJ Bolden, our number two ranked player overall. They're in the lead group for Sammy Brown, our number one linebacker in the country. They may be lead for both. They're definitely no lower than number two for either of them, in my opinion. So you just start looking at the quality of player that they're so high on. A Dylan Stewart, uh, the edge rusher from Washington, D.C. Friendship Academy, who's the number 35 overall player in the country. And you see a lot of high-end players that are ranked extremely high that are, are strongly considering Georgia here right now. So it has a chance to be a very special class, which is what you would expect with not only the recruiting chops of Kirby Smart on down to uh, a terrific off-field staff, but also winning two straight national titles. I'm looking at their list of nine commits here for 2024 so far. You already mentioned Landon Thomas, the tight end, but they have the highly rated safety, Peyton Woodyard, uh, quarterback, Ryan Pugslisi. Is there anyone else on this list who stands out to you or you're especially excited for right now? Yeah, I think you look at Georgia's class right now in this 2022 cycle, it's maybe or 2023 cycle, it's maybe the best linebacker class in America. And now to follow it up in 2024 to be a smaller hub, but Demarcus Riddick, He's a six foot two, 212 pound blur in the second level that can rush the passer. He's physical, uh, can crash down against the run and, and, and drop in space. If they could get him and Sammy Brown, that maintains the standard that they're trying to build in that linebacker room. And then I think that Landon Thomas's uh, teammate, Nye Carr, over there at Colquitt County, he's a guy that's a dynamic receiver that can stretch the field and, and be a game breaker for you in that position room. And then they go and land one of the fastest running backs in the country over the weekend in Dwight Phillips Jr., Sub-11 guy in the 100-meter dash, 4-2 speed in the 40-yard dash. Uh, the nation's number four running back, a big pickup for Dell McGee and company as this offense looks like it has a chance to be potent for years, become, years to come. So I do want to bring up, I think if there's one thing that fans might worry about, I want to address that. It could be Todd Munkin potentially leaving for the NFL. We saw Tampa Bay recently interviewed him. Obviously, your assistants and coordinators leaving is the bad part that comes with success. It's, it's just natural, but he's still out on the recruiting trail. How do you think that affects how these uh, prospects are, are viewing their, their potential with the school? Well, anytime that your program's successful, college football programs are going to look at your coaching staff and see who can we upgrade with 
or maybe even NFL teams uh, in the case of Coach Todd Monken. But I think when you're Kirby Smart, you always have uh, options in place if guys do take off. So Dan Lanning goes to Oregon while Glenn Schumann gets promoted eternally. Uh, and certainly I could have, you know, Will Muschamp's very qualified in that realm as well. And then you have on the offensive side, you know, if, if Todd Monken did uh, move on to another opportunity, uh, you certainly have Mike Bobo floating around. You have Buster Faulkner, who's the Georgia Tech offensive coordinator now, who's spent a lot of time around Georgia, who's got great pedigree there and is a strong recruiter. And then, sir, look, there would be a lot of applicants <laughs> if Kirby Smart gets some openings on his uh, on his staff in any position room. But uh, Todd Monken, I think, has got it pretty good right now at Georgia. And uh, they're ripping and roaring offensively, and and uh, he's doing a heck of a job. Yeah. I mean, that's nothing new for Kirby. He's had to replace a coordinator four times in seven seasons. Once again, that's just what comes with the success. Um, all right. We're going to sign out of here. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And thanks once again to Ellis Robinson and his family. And uh, – Remember to turn your notifications on because our National Signing Day coverage is still going strong. We got another commitment, Austin Mack, coming up at 4.45 Eastern time. And then our recap show comes on right after that. So subscribe to the 24 Sports YouTube channel. Turn those notifications on and we'll see you later.